Hi, my name is Tony Foster and I'm an alcoholic and today I'm going to talk about step five. Now you may be thinking to yourself, um, why am I qualified to talk about any step? Um, I would say to you I've been sober 21 years, I've sponsored uh, probably over 100 people over that time, uh, I've taken many many people through the steps, I've sat in on step studies, I've performed step studies. So I think I know the steps pretty well. I do have, I think, a, a fairly unique view of step five. And so I want to hone in on that as part of uh, this discussion because I think it's important uh, to do the steps the way the books tell us to both the 12 and 12 and the big book. And if we do that, I think we have to read all the words of a sentence very often step five it becomes just the recitation of step four to the sponsor but it's a lot more than that so before we get into it let's talk about where we've been in step one we admitted we were powerless over alcohol that our lives had become unmanageable in step two we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity in step three we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over the care of God as we understood him and in step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Now, what we wrote down in step four becomes a living, breathing document because we're going to use that in step five and in steps eight and nine. So once you've written it down, um, make sure you keep it in a safe, private place. And someday down the road, you might want to destroy it, but you might not. That's up to you but you definitely want to keep it through doing step nine. So um, in step five now, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. So the recitation of step four to our sponsor, admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being, him being the human being, the exact nature of our wrongs, it's, it's my experience that most people um, just speak to admitting to God to ourselves and another human being. They speak to what was written on step four and telling that sponsor. But the sponsor plays a bigger role here than I think um, many people know. The sponsor should have his own notepad taking notes and um, when he is hearing your recitation of step four, asking questions and probing so that he can create his own uh, document that talks about your character defects because if you start talking about um, whether you cheated on your high school sweetheart or um, you um, padded your expense report or you cheated on your spouse those things create the document that talks about the exact nature of your wrongs so the sponsor is very important in this. So let's, let's go on uh, to talk about what's written in the body of the big book in the 12 and 12. Now, I use both in doing the step series, but to be honest, I think the 12 and 12 better speaks to uh, the time that we're in. Um, the big book was written at a time when language was a little bit different, a little harder to understand, but I do want to uh, quote two paragraphs on page 73 of the big book, and I'm going to read them uh, because there are fairly long paragraphs. I think these two paragraphs speak to who we are as alcoholics. So on page 73, more than most people, the alcoholic leads a double life. He's very much the actor. To the outside world, he, re he presents his stage character. This is the one he likes his fellow to see. He wants to enjoy a certain reputation, but knows in his heart he doesn't deserve it. The next paragraph says, The inconsistency is made worse by the things he does on his sprees. Coming to his senses, he's revolted at certain episodes he vaguely remembers. These memories are a nightmare. He trembles to think someone might have observed him. As fast as he can, he pushes these memories far inside himself. He hopes they will never see the light of day. He's under constant fear and tension. 
that leads to more, that makes for more drinking. So we have these things that we've done in our lives that we want nobody to ever know about, that we've long said we're going to take to the grave. Step five is an ego smashing proposition. The whole uh, program is an ego smashing proposition, but step five more than most, as you'll see in a minute. Um, you know, the, this is our opportunity to get all these things out, get the monkey off our back, and not, ha not have to hold in all these things anymore. And that's, you know, a very big part of the steps. So on page 55 of the 12 and 12, um, it, it talks about uh, the ego smashing. So all of A's 12 steps ask us could, to go contrary to our desires. They all deflate our egos. When it comes to ego deflation, few steps are harder to take than step five. But scarcely any step is more necessary to long-term sobriety and peace of mind than this one. And it goes on to say on page 60, until we actually sit down and talk aloud about what we have so long hidden, our willingness to clean house is largely theoretical. When we are honest with another person, it confirms that we've been honest with ourselves and with God. My, um, my early career in AA, my sponsor drilled in my head that this was an ego smashing proposition, not just step five, the whole program. And he uh, had an ego that, um, he had a long-term sobriety when, when I met him, uh, I think he had 28 years when I first came in. Um, but his ego had been um, controlled with the steps, and I could see sparks of his ego, but I also saw how he controlled them, and I needed to do that. So um, he, he pointed to page 75 of the big book that says, we pocketed our pride and go to it, illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of our past. Again, speaking to those things we said we would take to our grave. Those things that we did maybe as kids um, that we said we'd never talk about. We don't know those people anymore, so who cares kind of mentality. But the reality is it's in our heart and our gut that these things still bother us. So how do we actually do the fifth step? Okay, first of all, the big book tells us that we can we have to use somebody we trust and it can be a minister a priest uh, a family friend a lawyer uh, potentially you know anybody that that is trustworthy I would not do that I would use my sponsor and I say that because if I've done my first four steps with my sponsor I'd like to believe that I've built trust in him so if I trust him then I should be able to do this with him. If I don't trust him, I need another sponsor. It's really that simple. Um, the reason I'm so strong about doing it with a sponsor is that he's had this conversation on your side of the table with his sponsor. So he knows what you're feeling. He can help uh, you relate to him and he'll relate to you. And that eases you going through this much better. He also may at some point tell you that he's done some of the same things that you've done. So that helps you to see that you are not such an outlier here. That, um, you know, some of the things that you've done, other people have done too. So I'm very strong on, on using a sponsor. Now that sponsor should come to this meeting with a notebook. Okay. And that notebook should be used for him to create a document relative to a summary to, of what you're going to tell him. Because as I started to say before, if you uh, are saying, I cheated on my high school sweetheart, um, he's going to write down cheat and put a check mark next to it. And then if you, you say further on in step four, I padded my expense report. Um, he's going to write thief and put a check mark next to it. <coughs> and as you go through all of your step four, he's going to be collecting all this information. At the end of it, he's going to have maybe eight or ten categories. 
probably two or three of those categories will only have like one thing in it. But the rest of them may have five, six, seven things in them. And those are the primary things that you have to work on as your character defects. And you will start working on them in steps six and seven. But that's the purpose of doing it, A, with a sponsor, and him having a notebook, and him probing what you're telling him. Okay, so that's how you come up with the exact nature of your wrongs. Now, one thing that is important to remember is the relationship between ego and relapse. Um, I've worked in treatment for 18 years. Uh, I've conducted a lot of groups. I've done a lot of individual sessions. And I can tell you unequivocally that every relapse I've ever uh, discussed with a client uh, the root cause of the relapse has been ego. It is usually allowing ego back into your life. Now, it may be uh, as simple as, uh, I don't need to go to meetings anymore. I don't need to talk to my sponsor. I've got this. That's all ego. Or it may be, I don't need to pray and meditate anymore. That's ego. I don't need means your ego has gotten back in the game. Now, the fact that you see blips of that is that's telling you that it's time for you to take action to get back into the program and do the things that help you to control your ego because that will only grow and that grows towards a drink and I, I think you may have heard unless you're brand new that a relapse happens long before you have that first drink the relapse begins with you not needing to go to meetings, a sponsor, talk to another addict or alcoholic, do the sober disciplines you do every day. Those are the things that you must do in order to stay sober and help you control your ego. So I've enjoyed talking about step five. I hope you got something out of it. And um, I will see you in step six. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me and thank you for watching. Bye.